The thing about the Spitfire that was so useful in combat was its maneuverability. Invariably in a fight, you're chasing each other round and round and round, but you could turn much more tight and a smaller turning circle than any German fighter, especially the 109. And uh, that was her the, 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 uh, best feature, by far. The 109 was a pretty good aeroplane. It was almost on a par with the Spitfire, the same speed. It had one advantage over the Spitfire, it could get higher. And we always were at a disadvantage. Every time we met them, they were higher than we were. And of course, that's always an advantage. But nevertheless, they had to come down to our level because otherwise they were failing in their duty to defend the bombers that they were supposed to look after. So they had to come down to our level. And the form was, you simply, uh, you had three blokes behind your squadron searching the sky constantly for these people. And as soon as they were sighted, we turned into them and flew straight at them. The German pilots, when we first met them, in, uh, was over Dunkirk, and they were very, very good. But it was so obvious towards the end of the, of the, the battle that these were not the same chaps at all. They were, they, they hadn't the skill they certainly hadn't the perseverance, or guts, if you like to call it that. It was most noticeable. Then uh, You got into a fight, and they immediately used to put the aircraft into a dive and go screaming for, for France. And uh, uh, the, uh, their morale must have been absolutely rock bottom, because they were getting a pasting every time they came over. If we hadn't had the Spitfire during 1940, uh, then I think it would have been very, very bad. I, in fact, I think we'd have lost the war. I'm sure we would. You will not find a Spitfire pilot can criticize in any shape or form the Spitfire. I've never met one. The, the, she really was the perfect flying machine. The big features that uh, the P-51 had was its long range. I mean, it could go anywhere that the heavy bombers could go and come back, stay with them and, and bring them home. The other features that um, made the P-51 so special was its uh, high maneuverability and high performance. It was very fast um, on the deck, on the ground, or at high altitude due to the uh, two-stage, two-speed supercharger. I always felt that I could outmaneuver any German airplane with the P-51. One of the disadvantages of the P-51 was the liquid-cooled engine that had to have a radiator to keep the engine cool. And of course, if you got a hole in your radiator system and you lost your coolant, uh, that was, that'd be pretty devastating. What characteristics make a, a good fighter pilot? Training, probably, you know, the guy with the most experience generally is gonna be the best pilot. So experience level was very important. Uh, knowing your airplane, knowing your tactics, knowing the enemy, knowing his tactics and capabilities was important. Eyesight was important in World War II because, you know, we didn't have radar and, uh, and things like this. You had to see them, you know, it was all visual. If you see somebody before he sees you, you can get yourself into a, a position of advantage to um, attack. And Maybe there's a little motivation there, too, you know, you do you want to see them. <laughs> I think it had the, uh, the best gun platform of any fighter in the world at the time. Uh, within about three and a half square feet, we had four fifties and a 20 millimeter. And you did not have to uh, uh, line them up like you did on a 51 or a 47, where they would cross at about 300 yards out. Ours stayed right there until they started dropping off. We used to uh, dive bomb and skip bomb. Uh, dive bombing, we, we would go for a bridge or railroad yard or something. But occasionally there at, uh, on the uh, coast of Italy, uh, the railroad ran south and there were giant bluffs and you, couldn't, you really couldn't dive bomb because you wouldn't be able to pull out. So we used to go in uh, maybe at 100 feet above the train yard drop our bombs and let them 
skip in there and then pull up and go over those bluffs. But it, it was always effective. It worked very well. I hate to say it was the coldest airplane in the world. They, uh, they said we had a cockpit heater, but no heat came out. And we froze to death at 25 and 30,000 in the wintertime. They sent over some powder blue flight suits that were like uh, winter underwear, and they had wires in them. And they had, uh, we had slippers uh, that plugged in and gloves that plugged in. The only part of it that warmed up the best was your fanny, what you were sitting on. And we were always embarrassed. And when they issued them to us, we went into the CO's office and said, I don't think I'm going to wear it. If I have to belly in or something, I don't want to be caught by the Germans in this outfit. Early part of 44, we received the, what they call the P-47D. And uh, what makes it so big is the, uh, are the ducts that fit underneath the airplane. They go from the engine to the turbine superchargers, which that's in the tail end of the airplane. And a turbine supercharger is what makes the airplane because you derive the 2,000 horsepower that you do at, at ground level up to its, what you call, uh, ultimate level of 30,000 feet. So everything from zero ground level up to 30,000 feet, I can, I can draw 2,000 horsepower. That added power meant so much. It meant that I could do combat with the enemy over his territory at all altitudes, and I could break off at will because I had more power than he had, and I could corkscrew, go up the altitude, and he couldn't follow me. Not only the uh, power, but the visibility of the pilot in the cockpit changed drastically because from a, from a uh, regular uh, uh, canopy that had bars on it, we now had sort of what they call a bubble canopy that was just like looking out of, uh, out of a, a tube, a glass tube. So it gave us tremendous visibility. Now, we had to learn very gradually as to what advantage that gave us over the Falco 490 and the 109. The most important thing that a pilot has to uh, think about is, as he's going in a combat, respect your adversary. In other words, don't underrate the ad adversary. So uh, there are no miracles. There are no born fighter pilots. Some are a little better than others. That's about it. But I would say time, training, 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 and more training is the key to any success. It was a fast airplane, much faster than the old ones which we are trained. It was a very maneuverable aircraft. It has a good climbing rate. So this was the first impression of the F-109. We had uh, uh, two weapons on top of the engine with a cannon through the, uh, through the propeller. And we had also two uh, 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 cannons underneath the wing. Uh, I didn't prefer this because in a tight turn, when you had a high chi, the chain who supported the wing weapons broke. And if you got a broke, you got a whole jam uh, on the whole system. So I took them out and I only, in most of the times, I only flew with three weapons. Two guns 50 millimeter on top of the engine and 20 millimeter through the, through the propeller. And uh, this was my individual uh, choice. I have 275 air victories. And uh, I want to mention, you know, we were often asked, why did the Germans have so high scoring? Uh, my answer is, there are three conditions. First, if you take off and go into the air, you have to find a target. We always found targets. In most cases, we were outnumbered. Compared with this, many American pilots who flew 50 missions over Germany, they never saw a German fighter, so he couldn't get a, a victory. This was number one, to find a target. Number two, this was how long did you stay in operation? 
you know, we had a different system. We were short of pilots. So the pilots have to be uh, uh, in combat uh, as long as it, it, it was possible. And thirdly, we were uh, engaged even uh, after we have been injured. Uh, when we recovered, we inspect to your unit and fly it again. The Focke Wolf was 19D9, was the fastest aircraft that the German Air Force had as propeller driven aircraft, no doubt about that. Focke Wolf D9 was very good in, in dogfighting as well as in speed. And these two, two advantages were much better than any other German fighter we had in before. The, the Focke Wolf D9 was easy to fly much easier than the old one, the A8, and e much, much easier to fly than the 109. It was absolutely a pilot's aircraft. Everything which was bad in the 109 as far as switches are concerned, as far as the outlook was concerned out of the cockpit, but that was a much better, you were sitting much higher than in the, in the 109, so you had a much better look around. All these things were better than on the old 109. But when you flew the 190, uh, after the 10th or 11th mission, you had the feeling you are at home. The cockpit was much better. The in instrumentation was much better. The speed was higher. The, the dogfight possibility was much better. So what do you expect more? The 262 was, had a marvelous design. It was an uh, aircraft of the future. The 262 was much superior over any uh, any Allied fighter what I, what you met at the time in the in the air, whether it was an American one or whether it was an English one. You were feeling like a king against these uh, other aircraft, enemy aircraft in the air. That the 262 had a lot of difficulties, uh, especially with the engine, and especially with the speed. For example, the engine was a very bad engine. The, the material of the engine was, was at that time, at the end of the war, not the best one. So you, you every time had to look very carefully what your engine is doing. The second one was, we didn't have at that time any speed brakes or dive brakes on that aircraft. And so, so out of it came, when you w w went into a shallow dive, you came very near to what we called at that time the Mach effect. The Mach effect was the speed of the sound. Uh, we called it the Mach effect, not knowing too much about the speed of the sound. The 262 was at that time that aircraft that you ever were expecting to be better than any other aircraft in the world. And no doubt of this, uh, also it had a lot of difficulties, as I mentioned. It was the best aircraft that you could find at this time. No doubt I like it.